I was reminded again, PayPal. In the village of Buckhorn, where I live, there are people moving back with their parents. They've kept their jobs. They still have jobs, but they can't afford to live elsewhere. And so there's a problem going on in Canada from coast to coast to coast is that our economy is not strong. Trade deficit, now we are, trade exports are, uh, are way down. Brian Lilly is a columnist with the Sun, and he's no economist, but you know what's going on. And it seems to me, I'll put this to you, that the Trudeau government over the last eight years has consistently tried to shrink the economy, whether it was with more taxes or telling uh, people like the Chancellor of Germany, we don't want to be in the LNG business, even though Australia now got $90 billion last year. Canada could do well with $90 billion a year, couldn't it? Imagine what we could do if when Germany and Japan showed up and said, we want your LNG, yeah. instead of saying, well, there's no business case, we said, <laughs> yeah, okay, let's figure it out. Let's work it out and we'll all make money. There were more than a dozen proposals for LNG export terminals on file when Justin Trudeau took office. Most of them have been removed. And Trudeau says, well, it's because there's no case. There's no business case. Well, part of the reason there's no business case is he has put roadblocks in the way. One of them um, ended up being denied, even though it was in Quebec. And I thought this was the one that would go through. Energy Saguenay, they were going to take a, an existing pipeline that uh, brings natural gas from Western Canada to Ontario. Right. And where it came to, close to Eastern Ontario, they're going to put a little, another pipeline, take it across Northern Quebec to Saguenay, liquefy it, and send it out of the uh, St. Jean, Sir Richelieu. Or not St. Jean, Sir Richelieu, but you know where I'm talking about, up in the Saguenay. So and, and they would export everybody it. Everybody would be happy. But... The Trudeau government said, no, um, you know, there could be some whales in the way. There are ways to deal with that. Yeah. No, nobody wants dead whales washing up well, on the shore. Why do we have a government, though, that is saying to good business proposals, is saying, you know, we're going to tax you more and tax businesses so they think, oh, wait, Canada's reputation, I've had guests on here saying, Canada's reputation in the world as a place, safe place to do business is in tatters. No, we're, we're no longer a safe place to do business. And what does that mean down the road? It means, well, fewer people making good money, making good middle class incomes. Why you incomes, have to move back with your parents. Which is why you have to move back with your parents. Fewer tradespeople building things, fewer uh, grocery store workers serving customers. Like, it, there, there is a knock-on effect from this. Yeah. Uh, and, and people love to talk about it when you describe... Well, if we get this, then the multiplier effect is X and we'll create so many jobs. But they never do it in reverse when you say, well, if we say no to this proposal, yes. how many people are going to be unemployed? They don't do that. And the Trudeau government has you know, become Captain No. And now they're... Oh, no, no, no. We're going to send checks to everybody and help them out, Brian. Hey, let, me, let me give you a quick example. Saskatchewan wants to do a, a wind and solar project, but they've got to have baseload natural gas power on it. The Trudeau government's trying to say no. <laughs> Insane. Three minutes and longer. Liberties and freedom of speech are under attack in Canada like never before. So let's keep this discussion on the air. PayPal, write a check, and please include your address so I can write a thank you letter to you. And ask your friends, please subscribe. It's important to keep this on the air. And thank you. <laughs>